Yes. Yo, what up, YouTube? It's your boy Penny LS1 checking in once again. Got a big update today. Show y'all the progress. Show y'all what I'm getting ready to do today. So as y'all can see, mini skirt is in, I guess you could say second to last stage of primer. This is 2K primer. We'll get it one more block and final prime before wet sand before we seal it and shoot it. I didn't mess with the doors. As y'all know, I'm still looking for doors. I did, however, find a passenger side door. So it is over here. I just need to strip it down, get it prepped, and go ahead and put it on. Still working on the fender wells, the inner fenders, get those ready for paint. As you see, the hood is already ready. I just need to take it out back, put it on my horses, spray it. The bumper will be done separate because obviously it's plastic, so we'll take that off and do that. And then I'm gonna take this fender off so I can do the inside the fender arches. And then we're gonna actually put the color on the inside. But today, oh, one more thing. I did take off the window trim, as you can see, the windshield and the back glass, or some of y'all like to call it the rear windshield. So I took all the trim off. I, I broke a few clips, not all of them, but if you don't have one of these tools right here, you need to get you one because even with that tool, I broke one. So I got, I got all my trim ready. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm probably going to chemical strip these and then paint them satin black. But today... We're gonna install my Corvette. I think these are 13 inch, 12 by 12.9 or 13 inch rotors with the C5 caliber and that gold looking thing. That is the core three bracket that makes all this possible. So now I do have drop spinners on here, so I will have to do some grinding. So as you can see, I got my die grinder out with my carbide bit. So let me get the car jacked up. We'll get the wheel off. And um, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble. Well, I'll show you because I got the blazer brakes on it now. So I'll show you a quick clip of that. And then we'll go ahead and get that disassembled and we'll get started. So I got the wheel off. I still need to pop off the tie rod in so that I'll be able to rotate the or turn the wheel. So this is the stock g body i mean uh some g body the stock blazer brakes on the g body to be honest with you i mean i didn't even drive the car that much when i put these on here because i was already in the process of tearing everything down i drove it a couple times but it stopped better than the original brakes but these are going to be much bigger and they look better so I've got to disassemble this whole unit because I need to get the back, the, uh, the dust shield off, which is sandwiched in between the hub and the knuckle. So I've got to take everything off pretty much, every, except, the, uh, except the knuckle. So, but I just want to show y'all what it looks like before. And then we'll go ahead and bust it down and we'll get working on it. Okay, so we got everything broke apart. Got my caliber resting up on a bucket there so I don't stress the line or break the line. Now these lines came with the Core 3 kit. These are the Flex Core lines. They're still braided with the um, whatever this plastic is on the outside so it doesn't scratch anything that's painted. Now from my uh, recollection, the only bolts that you're gonna have to use from your original blazer spindle, it's gonna be these right here just to mount the hub to the spindle. The Core 3 kit comes with these bolts and these bolts. So the bracket, let me see if I can get this up here, hold on. I'm gonna show you what I, if you can look real close on this spindle. 
sorry about that. So if you look real close, see that right there? That little raised area right there and this one right here. So when you put the put the bracket up against it, see how it doesn't sit flush? See that right there? So I'm about to grind that flat. It kind of almost, but see if it's flush right there, then the hole doesn't line up. So that one, and then the same thing at the bottom. See it? This piece right, right here. It's not letting it go flush. So that's what I'm gonna use this for. So pretty much all I'm gonna do is just massage it down to it's flat with this surface right here. And then of course, just hit it with some paint so it doesn't rush because it'll be bare metal. So we'll do that here, here. I'm gonna cut you back on once I get that ground down. And I'll show you how much material that needs to be taken off. Now, for the regular blazer spindle, you don't have to do that because this part is flat. There is one other piece, uh, one other part you will have to grind. I'll show you all that in a minute. But if you have the drop spindle, Bell Tech, it's just the design. Whatever reason they put these on here it's for just aesthetics, I believe. And it just gets in the way. Like I said, this Core 3 kit was not designed for the Bell Tech. It was designed for the factory blazer spindle. So, so let me get my air hose extended over here and we'll go ahead and we'll get to grinding. All right, so you can see how much material I had to take off to get that bracket to go flush. But using that carbide bit, it was like cutting through butter. And like I said, this is just a die grinder. You can use a Dremel. You can actually do it with a grinder. I see a lot of people using grinder with the grinding wheel or flap disc. It'll, it'll cut right through this. This is just, I believe that's aluminum. Let me see. Nope, it's still. <laughs> yep, well, it still cut through it like butter. So that's the first modification you're going to have to make. So let me mount the bracket on there and I'll show you the second modification, which is also the same one you have to make on the stock blazer spindle to get the for bolt clearance for this bracket. So let's 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 get that on. I'll show you. Actually, actually, before I put that on, I want to show y'all. So this is the the spacer that they give you with the Core 3 kit that takes the place of the dust shield for spacing, basically. So I'm gonna put that on here real quick. And if you didn't know, with these Belltech spindles, because of the height of the center or of the hub on the Blazer ones, they're further down. But with this is a two inch drop spindle, so this center piece is up higher. This bolt right here, this is actually a stud because you can't get a bolt through the backside like you can on a blazer. So you're gonna use your two bottom stud, your two bottom bolts, and this stud comes with the with the kit with Beltec, and that allows you to put your at least if I can do this with one hand, put your spindle on or your bearing on. I might push the bolts out, but so so that's what that's for. Then it comes with a little nut right here. All right, let me get this on here, then I'll show you the bracket. So like I say, this is the bag of bolts you get with the kit from Core 3. These are the bracket bolts, but first I need to put on, I mean, these are the, those are the bolts that mount the, 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 the pad abutment bracket to the actual Core 3 bracket. But these bolts also came in the kit, nuts and bolts. This is actually going to hold the bracket on to the hub. So two spacers, well, washers on the bolt side and then one spacer or one washer on the nut side. So let me show you, see that indention right here? So two washers will fit that perfect top and bottom. And then you put your nut on the back side with one washer each top and bottom. This. Hold on, you can't see the top one. I'm gonna raise you up just a little bit. Spacer on the back. Nut on the back. Now this is just gonna be mock-up. I'll I did torque the, the hub bolts 
those are 85 foot pounds I believe you can pull that up on Google yourself but I believe it's 85 so I torque mine 85 now the kit did come with some blue lock tight for all these other boats but I'll do that later the the boats for the uh, hub had locked tight on it already I think I put some on it before I had taken them off before I put them back on the last time so as you can see now we got it's flat now so clearance wise we're good I think let me see I feel I feel a little resistance now it's flat now I do feel resistance let me show you at the bottom down there let me see hold on take you off the tripod I feel a little resistance and I see a gap right there I think uh, no that's just me tripping okay no I should be all right nope there it is you see it so that means on the back side on this down here I missed a piece I think uh, let me tighten them up and see but it looks like it's somewhere down here but I got it all no I got it let me, let me take it back off real quick hold up just want to make sure make sure you got it flat before you go torquing because you do not want this the safety item you do not want your brakes to not be in line properly so let me take it back off real quick I may just be seeing some. my eyes might be playing tricks on me but you definitely want to be safe and not sorry nah cuz I didn't even grind that part oh right here probably Oh, yeah probably right there yep that's what it is right here ah snap I didn't hit my fender <laughs> my freshly primed fender let me uh let me grind this down real quick should just take a hot second so if you got headphones on turn the volume down just a just a hair so I'm gonna keep the I'm not gonna put it on time lapse I just want to Knock it off real quick. So we right. And I put the hub on now. I ain't got no space, but let's see. it hold on let's see right there yeah I think that did I do it nope right here this little lip I don't remember doing that on the other side <laughs> yes, I did it and didn't realize I did it but I don't remember doing that on the other side. There we go. I guess I did do it on the other side. So now we flat, 100%. Like I said, you could do this with a Dremel, but I can't find my corded Dremel. My battery power Dremel don't have enough torque. And then the battery runs out too fast anyway. All right, so let's put this back on and then I'm gonna show you the other modification so we're going to take this back off but i just want to show you real quick and then we'll go ahead and cut the last piece let's see so we're not gonna well i'm gonna have to snug it up because i need it to be flush for fitment purposes and then i'll show you the other clearance clearance issue now these are 22 millimeter nuts and bolts so we got this wrench. Damn it, I'm gonna put this on my ratchet, air ratchet, or um, on my adapter. Hold on. I'm gonna put this one on the um, battery power ratchet, because, yeah, I ain't finna be. But I don't have a, this is a half inch socket, so I don't have a half inch. Dang it, where's my half inch? Uh, I don't have a half inch 
I have a half inch dry, but I don't have a half inch cordless one. So we're just gonna put this adapter on here real quick. And we'll get to getting. So wrench on the on the bottom where you can get the wrench on the you can get the socket, I mean the uh ratchet on the back side. On the top one you can't. So I'm gonna show you. We're gonna do this one like this. But up here, you can't get this up here because of that right there. Or you can't even see it. Hold on, let me raise the camera up so you can see what I'm pointing at. On the top boat, you can't get the ratchet on this because of the control arm. Maybe if I didn't have this adapter on there. But anyway, we're just gonna do it this way. We're gonna put the wrench on here and ratchet over here. Now it doesn't, it doesn't have enough torque to, but I want to get this flush so I can show you the clearance on the other bracket. So 22. Okay, it's flush. Now, when we put the abutment bracket on, which is this piece right here, those Allen head bolts go through here and this is threaded, right? So it threads right into there. So let's do that. And I believe I did, yeah, the spacers go in between. Let me take my glove off so I can feel the, and uh, I'd like, so I did the other side already so that I already had a straightforward knowledge of how to get this on. But I'm showing this to you guys that haven't done it yet. This little washer or spacer is going to go right here in between the bracket, in between this bracket and the button bracket. What that does is that's going to move your caliber out like that. I got lucky it was able to get my spacing perfect with one, but it comes with, I think, four, six, it comes with six. So if you need to put two on each or three on each just to get it right and see. This is gonna go right here. So let me let me pull that off. And we'll thread this in here real quick. And I'm gonna show you the clearance issue. So we got that. I dropped the dang on spacer. I'm known for dropping spacers. I found a couple of uh crush washers when I when I moved the car last time. So we'll put that there, put the spacer here. And We'll thread it in. Now let me show you. Let me get this in here real quick. Is that it? Yep. Okay. All right. Let me show you the clearance issue. All right. See that bottom boat right here? See this? Two things. I can't turn it anymore because the threads are actually rubbing up against the spindle. And then also see that right there once it gets far in far in enough the actual head of the boat the shoulder if you will is resting up against this so we're going to have to grind it down enough for the for the boat to go in and for the head to clear here and up here i think it was the same because you can see it right there Hold on, let me get my focus right it's rubbing at the top right there so this piece right here is actually rubbing that so let me grab my sharpie I think I got a silver sharpie somewhere here and I'm just gonna mark a line right here and a line down here at the bottom like this and then I'm gonna grind in between the two lines same thing down here I'm gonna mark a line right here and a line right here and I'm gonna grind it so let's get going <laughs> Ready for final assembly. Well, final mock-up assembly. Like I said, I'm not going to torque these boats yet because I'm debating whether or not I'm going to paint or power coat this and this as well. 
So I know it's, I think it's like zinc coated, but. So like I say, not torquing these bolts yet. Just gonna mock it up, snug it, show y'all the clearance on the wheels. So I know some people did have a question on that. Now, when you order your kit from Core 3, they tell you in the description, when you pick your rotor size, it tells you the recommended or the, the required wheel size, the minimum required wheel size. So the reason I'm just now putting these on and I, was, I had the blazers is because the blazer brakes will go right on the G-body and it'll fit the factory G-body wheels, the 15s. When I ordered this kit from Core 3, I knew I was gonna go with these 17 inch N90s. So when I ordered my kit, I specifically got one that 17 will clear. Now they do have a hybrid kit, um, Warren G Body, um, Elko Warren, he has the hybrid kit. I believe he has this kit and the hybrid kit with the 14 inch rotor. That's what I want, but once again, I don't have wheels that are clear that when I get my custom forced wheels, I'll go with that. But when you get that, all you need to do is get a new bracket and then the rotor. That's it. So you just need to get the bracket and the rotor. Everything else will bolt right on. You won't have to do any more grinding. And then you can sell this to somebody that needs it. So, so let me get all this. Make sure I got my, let me get all this buttoned up and I'll show you the clearance on that boat. Uh, I think I got it enough I think I got that um shaved off enough for it to clear so let's go here Jody what's going on man oh you know it well by the time I after all that I know the nuts and bolts without even having to I know this is a 22 millimeter I know that's 18 <laughs> you know what I mean? You do it so many times, you don't even have to guess what size of the wrenches you need. I know, but my redneck butt, I don't get to fish like I used to, but uh -huh. I have one friend that's the best I've ever seen. Yeah. Like you with your car. He knows where they're at. I got to go to Palestine. It was so good. I'm 55. Uh -huh. It's like you with your car. So yeah. You know, so I finally got to go. That's all right. He fired me up and I had to be at May Pearl by 6, and we, we got back to his house at May Pearl at 9.15. And every hour yet, crappie fishing. Yeah. Every hour yesterday. Do you think y'all could get full on uh, a 12 deal of fillet? Oh, matter yeah. of fact, because I want to ask you if I can borrow the power washer for. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to use it as we speak. Okay. With that. I'm going to wash that patio cover for that pretty little grandbaby. I got you. All right, y'all, we back. So that was, uh, that was my neighbor, Jody. So I got one neighbor that goes fishing all the time. So he comes by whenever he sees me in the garage, brings me fish. But today he, he needed to borrow my pressure washer. So he traded me some fish <laughs> for the pressure washer. And then my other neighbor, he comes by normally at nighttime when he sees me out here and brings beer. <laughs> so it's good to have some uh, friendly neighbors. So so we got, we got it on here. So let's go ahead and put the, the Allen boats on or the hex head bolts, whatever you want to call them. First, let me slap the rotor on here. This sucker is heavy. So we got the rotor on. And then we'll put the bracket on. I need to be on that side so I can see. Now I might, I might can get it. I might can get it without take this glove off so I can feel for this washer you guys can see it but I barely can so let's do that and let's do that okay don't want to drop the washer start it Got it. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna use my ratchet because this is the part I hate. 
because that thing is so so many turns on it now where's my so this is a oh here it is 12 millimeter hex bolt i got room to get in there So the top one went through, went, went in, it cleared. See if we got enough clearance on the bottom one. So if we need to shave some more, we should be good though. If I can get the socket in there. Okay. Uh, nope, we touching. I can, I can get it to go. Let me see, I might, no, I can clear it. The torque went out on the, this thing only goes like, 40 foot pounds, I think, on this ratchet. So we got clearance, we're good on that. Oh yeah. Perfect. All right. See, it's not rubbing. Once you put the wheel on and the Lug nuts. Now we got to get the caliber on, which that's pretty easy. Where my bolts go? So I'm going to use, I can't remember which ones I used on the other side. Let me go take a sneak peek real quick. I got two sets of caliber bolts. One came with the core three, and the other ones I bought because I didn't even know. That I had them. What color are those? Okay, I did use the the silver ones. Okay, not that it matters. But as you can see, these have lock, Loctite on them already. These bolts right here is what I'm talking about. This is what mounts the caliber to. Let me let you up a little bit. Mounts the caliber to this right here. So, and real quick before I put this on here, let me show you. So there's the caliber, there's the banjo boat. Those red lines right there, I ordered those lines. I had them custom made. So I was gonna run the red lines, but I think I'm just gonna keep the core three flex, flex line on there. But what I did get was a, look at that. It's a titanium. Cause I ordered these lines and I got these boats, the banjo boat. So that's a titanium. It's like a burnt titanium, I think is what they call it. You can see how the the head is kind of how they do it. It's a yeah, it's it's super light. And then of course I got new brake pads, which I'm not gonna put these on just yet. And I got these from Core Three with the kit, so these are just OE AC Delco pads for the Corvette. So let's get the caliber on there and get it buttoned up. Slide this up here. Hold up. Let me get this glove on. These gloves are just. They're good, but when you're doing small stuff, they get in the way. So then this just goes up here. Now you're gonna need a wrench to hold this from spinning while you tighten that top one up once you get it to start, because it's gonna wanna spin. See it spinning? So we'll get a opening wrench on that. Same thing on the bottom, it spins. I think that's a uh, 16 millimeter. I had it out yesterday. Yep, 16 on there. Put my 15 up there. Or yeah, 15. Okay, 15 nut head, 16 wrench. Don't go crazy with it. Okay. Down on the bottom. Find a flat spot. Ah, I keep hitting my freshly primed fender. Okay. Make, make sure you make sure you caliber pins are 
nice and greased so it moves in and out. That's real nice. Okay. Now the last step uh, is to <laughs> take that brake line off, which I'm not looking forward to because it's full of brake fluid. <laughs> but you got to do it. And so let me find a piece of cardboard to lay down there because I'm going to lose some fluid no matter what. These are the... Okay. So let me get that part done. I might time lapse just so y'all can see it. Hold on. I think we got it. So as y'all saw, spraying, well, actually you didn't see it. I sprayed some uh, brake clean on there because as you know, that brake fluid will eat through the paint. So, and actually on the back side of this one, it's actually not even painted right where the line goes. It's just aluminum, but I sprayed it on here anyway because I had to repaint my calibers on the, the blazer ones and they're already peeling again from that brake fluid. So, Damn, these mud moves real nice. All right, let me get this bucket out the way. Well, there you have it. C5 Corvette, 13 inch rotor, two inch drop spindle, slight modification needed, Clear no clearance issues, the rotor spins, no grinding, no rubbing, no nothing. So the last test will be to put the wheel on here see if it clears I know it'll clear but I want to show y'all so let me uh, I gotta touch up the frame well not really touch up as you can see this right area right here is where the inner fender liner covered so when I paint the rest of the frame I wasn't able to reach that so I'm gonna go ahead and repaint this section get that and like I say the fenders are coming off so when I primed I didn't prime this part I back masked it um, but all that's gonna get primed and painted when I pull it off the weather is good now. Oh, one other thing. I did move the harness. I had it coming out here. The, and then I didn't have anywhere to route it without having it go up here and around. And it wasn't long enough to get to where it needed to go. So I moved it. And as, as y'all saw, I got a hole drilled in the top of the firewall. This was factory. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to find me a grommet that will run a one out battery cable from a battery to my amp. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that while I got all this stuff out. That way, once I put that inner fender liner back in, I won't have to worry about that. And I'll just leave the wire in the floor. It won't connect to the battery yet until I get the stereo going. But that way, I'll have my, my amp wire already ran through the firewall and won't have to tear nothing apart. But I'm gonna try to paint this just probably with some, uh, I don't know, engine paint or something. So I'll pr I need to, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I probably, once I get the harness ran, I can pull the car in the driveway and then I can just hit the pressure washer and get all that because I can't, I'm not going to do it in a garage and have water everywhere. So, but anyway, so we on, we good. C5 Corvette brakes, core three bracket, S10 Blazer Bell Tech two inch drop spindle, slight modification as you saw, but we good to go. So let's slap this wheel on here so I can show y'all how the fitment is. There you go. Confirmation. You see how close it is? It's close, but it don't rub. No rubbing, no scraping, no nothing. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I like it. Oh, man. <laughs> Thumbnail. We got it all on. Um, I didn't torque everything yet because I'm still going to take the brackets off and try and decide if I'm going to have them, have them powder coated or if I'm going to spray them satin black when I paint all my my window trim so let me show you this right here in this box so in that box right there under the table is a portable paint booth it's a it's a, a 8 by 8 by 13 not big enough to put a car in but big enough to paint small parts so I'm gonna paint the underside of the hood in there the inner fender the the fender, fender jams and the inner fender wells, all that, all my trim and my nuts and bolts, like the bolts for the 
fender, the, the ones with the big washers that go mount the, the fender liner to the fender. I'm going to paint all those satin black. They are rusty crusty. So, but anyway, thank you for rocking with your boy. If you haven't already, go ahead and uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Check me out on Instagram and TikTok at PennyLS1. As you can see, we finally getting some work done. I'm looking for a driver side, driver side door for 86 SS. Got my passenger side. So if you know anybody, hit me up. Let me know. Cash on hand. I need this door ASAP. At this, <laughs> like I say, my goal was to have a car ready for paint. It is almost ready. I mean, I'm just waiting on the door. Obviously, that was going. That was going. That's holding me back. But once I get the door in, it don't take much to get those prepped. But my goal was to have it painted by spring break, which is two weeks away. Mm -hmm.